Okay, Phil, for a class, I'm back out of the classroom now. I only got to use a few days there. So one of the first thing I want to do is go over that number test number two. Again, I can only go through one of the tests. And so uh, this is the test I'm going to pick right here. It says a package right here, mass M, starts from rest, slides a length L down that inclined plane. I gave you the coefficient of friction, which is the square root of 3 over 4, right here. And the first thing I said was, what is the work due to gravity for this block to go down the incline, right here? Well, there's two ways we could have done it. One way we could have done is the mg dotted with the s, right here. mg is this way, s is that way. The angle between here, if that's 30, that would be 90 minus 30, right there, from this triangle. So it'd be the magnitude of the first times the magnitude of the second, which is L, times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 90 minus 30. And that right there is just a half, so it's just one half MGL. We, another way we could have done this is we said because gravity is a conservative force, we could have written that work due to gravity is minus the change in potential, which is minus the final minus the initial. So this is the height right here. And again, the two minuses just give me one half mgh. It's the same thing. You could have done it either way. Uh, okay. Now, I also asked, what is the work due to the normal force right here? Well, the normal is perpendicular. Normal is this way and s is that way. They're perpendicular. The dot product gives me zero right here. So there's the work due to the normal. Work due to friction is the frictional force dotted with the distance right here. The angle between this and S is 180, which gave us the minus. The friction is mu k n. The magnitude of S is just L. And then we can put in what n is. n is equal to my mg cosine of 30 degrees. And uh, so th then I can plug in my mu k, which is the square root of 3 over 4, and the cosine of 30, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So this just gives me minus 3 eighths mgl. You notice any time it speeds it up, like this one up here, it was a positive work because it sped it up. This one didn't speed it up or slow it down. This one only slowed it down right here. So this was a negative right here. Now we can get the total work. The total work, I just sum these three up right here, and that's 4 eighths, and this is minus 3 eighths. So if I just subtract those, this, the total work is 1 eighth MGL, and that equals the change in kinetic, which is the final kinetic minus zero because it started from rest. Okay, so we just have uh, the total work equals the change in kinetic, cancel the M's, cancel the two, and then take the square root of both sides. So the velocity at the bottom is one half square root of GL. Right here. I also ask you to find the acceleration down. We could have gone and used forces, but we can just use constant acceleration, just using the V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A X minus X of naught. We got the V squared from right up here. V naught was zero, and X minus X of naught is L. So we get one this squared, one fourth GL equals two GL. Cancel the L's, divide out by then divide out the two. So A is just one eighth G. Right here, better be less than G right here. Uh, okay, and uh, or if we wanted to, we could have used the sum of the forces right here. We could have said the force is this way, which is mg sine thirty minus the friction equals m a. And we would have said, there's mg sine 30 minus mu k n equals ma. Combine these two together. The, this just gives you 3 eighths, and this is 4 eighths, and so gave you the 1 eighth. The same answer. So you could have worked it out either way. Then I asked for the time it takes to go down. Well, we can just use, we have to use constant acceleration. It's the only equation that has the time in it. So we'll just plug into this. We know x sub naught is zero. We know v naught is zero. These two are both zero. 
we know A is 1/8 G. So I just and we know X is L, so I just plugged it in. Now just throw everything on this side and take the square root right there. So T is just 4 times the square root of L over G. So there's the first one right there. Number two, problem number two, I just asked you to write out the forces on these three blocks right here. And so if you look at the question, it says block a block of mass 3m right there is rests on a frictionless surface. There's no friction here. A second block of mass m is placed on the first block as shown, and there is friction between the two blocks. And the top block has a rope tied to it right here, connected to the wall to keep it from moving. The lower block has a rope tied to it. It's tied to this 2m hanging over this pulley right here. And I said the 2m block accelerates down at A. So this one's going to accelerate down at A, which means that one better accelerate this way with A because they're tied together. This one is not accelerating. So I said uh, draw the forces. Okay, so what do we have? We have the 2mg, the T2. We got the same rope, so it's T2. We got friction here. No friction here, that's smooth. We got two normals. N2 and N1, we had a 3mg coming down. Then the, the top block right here, we have a T1 and we have a friction. Remember, these two are equal and opposite, just like the two normals are equal and opposite. We also have the mg down. Okay, here are my three coordinate systems. The green one's right there, so if I look at the forces on the top block right here, we just have friction minus T1 equals zero. It's not accelerating. This block right here, we have N1 minus Mg equals zero. It's also not accelerating. The middle block, we have T2 minus the friction equals 3Ma. Don't forget, that's that mass is 3. Then the forces in the Y on this block, we got N2 minus N1 minus 3Mg equals zero. And then on this block over here, we have 2Mg minus T2. Again, if I call that way positive, I better call that way positive, equals 2ma. Those are the just, that's all I asked for. Just write out the sum of the force equations on the three blocks. Okay. Okay, the third one, right below that here, it says a small bead of mass m rotates about a vertical post. It's just going around like this at a constant speed by two strings. There's a string going this way and another string going up like that. The period of rotation is t. The time it takes to go around, I'm using little t. I don't want to get it confused with the big t's here. The lower string is horizontal, and the upper string of length l, that is a length l, is 60 degrees. Okay. So I said, first draw the forces on the b. Well, there's only three forces. There's two tensions, a t2 going this way and a t1 going that way, and an mg. That's it right there. Okay, and then I said write out the forces on the bead. Again, we want to put one of our axes towards the center of the circle, which is this way. So what do we have? We have T2 going this way, and we have the component T1 cosine 60 also going in. That's cosine 60 is a half, so you got T2 plus 1 half T1 equals mv squared over r, where this is the radius right there. Then we can look at the forces in the y. We got the upward force, which is T2, T1 sine 60, which is the square root of 3 over 2, minus mg equals 0. Okay, so there was the sum of the forces in the x and the y. Then I said, what is the length of the lower string? Well, if this one has a length of L, and that's 60 degrees, this must just be L cosine 60. Well, which is just 1 half L right there. So there's what your radius is. Then I said, what is the speed of the bead? Well, the speed, going around a constant speed, it's the distance around the circumference divided by the time. We'll put in our r right there, and the twos will drop out. It's just pi l over t. Then, what was the acceleration of the bead? The only acceleration is towards the center of the circle. And so that's just v squared over r. So it's just this squared divided by r. So v squared is, there's v squared, and r we said was 1 half l, 
the two comes up to the top and cancel one of the L's is 2 pi squared L over T squared. So there's the acceleration. Then what is the tension in the upper string? What is T1 and what is T2? From right here, we can get T1. It's just mg times 2 over the square root of 3. We'll take that T1, plug it up into here. We know what R is. We know what V is, so we can calculate T2. T2 is mv squared over R minus a half a T1. And so if we just take our V squared over R, this is, all, this is all V squared over R, so just multiply this by M, that's what I get here, then minus one half of this. The halves drop out, the twos drop out, and you just get mg over the square root of three. So there's your T2. Okay. Uh, then problem number three, sorry, four. Here we just have a block of mass M Starts from rest, slides down the frictionless ramp, a vertical distance h, right here. The surface then levels out before running a loop-de-loop -loop of radius r. The block is moving fast enough so it doesn't leave the loop right there. After the loop, it encounters a rough section of length d, so that length right there is d, uh, and coefficient of friction mu k. After the rough, rough section, the block hits a spring, compressing it a distance s. And the spring has a spring constant k right here. I said label, we labeled the points a, b, c, d, e, and f. f is way over here with it at the very end right there. Okay, and so all I ask you to do is write out the energy equation between different points. I said don't solve for anything. So between A and B. At A, it's all potential due to gravity. Right here, there's no kinetic, there's no spring energy. So it's all MGH. Okay, and then by the time it gets to there, it's got some potential. And now its height is R. It's exactly the equal to the center of it mgr plus it's moving, one half mvb squared. So there is the energy equation between a and b. Now I said write it between b and c. Well there's the energy at b, I'll just put that over here. There's my energy at b, and that should equal the energy at c. Well, the energy at c, now my height is 2r instead of 1r, and the speed is c rather than b. So there is the energy between b and c. Right here. Now I said, what is it between A and D? Well, if we go back to A, there's the energy at A. Now at D, right here, it's all kinetic. It has no potential. So it's all one half MVD squared. Okay. Now I said, give me the energy between D and E. Well, at D, it has the, the kinetic energy, just that same term. But then I had lost some, minus mu k n, and we know n is mg, times d. And that should be the energy at E, which is just kinetic, right there. And then the last one is, what is, go from A all the way to F. Well, again, at A, you just have mgh. Then, going through this whole thing, we lost friction. We lost work due to friction just in that little section, the same one we lost before. And then when we get all the way to the end, we stopped. If we were moving, we'd keep compressing more right here, but that's maximum compression, and it's all spring energy. So there is the energy equation between A all the way to S right here. I should tell you, if I would have asked you to calculate the total work from A all the way to S, all the way to F, the total work would be zero. Why? Because what's the change in kinetic? The speed here is zero, the speed there is zero. The total work would have been zero if I would have asked you that from A to F. And if you would have calculated and added up all the works, you notice what gave it work right here. Well, gravity between A and F Gravity gave it some positive work. This didn't do anything. It gave it and took it away again. And then friction took some work away. That would have been a negative. This would have been a positive. This would have been a negative. And the work due to the spring would have been a negative because it slowed it down. And when you add them up, you would have had zero.
right here. Okay, and then this last extra credit one right here. We just had a pulley with a 3M and an M here. And this one right here, we release it from rest. We release it from rest and this one drops, this one moves up right here. And I asked, calculate the time it takes for this one to move down H and this to go up an H. We could have done it with energy. I just thought I'd do it with forces here, but we could have done it with energy too. Over here, if we look at the, I put my coordinate system down, and over here I put it upward right here because I'm assuming it's going this way. And if we look at the forces on this one, we got T minus mg equals ma. And the other one is 3mg minus T equals 3ma. And then I just add the two equations together. The 3mg and the minus mg is 2mg, and the ma and the 3ma is 4ma. So I, I can solve for A. Just divide out the 4m, and you get A equals 1 half g. Again, it better be less than g right here. Then I need to get, uh, if I wanted to get the final speed, I could have used this equation right here. I know what the A is, 1 half g, the, the halves would drop out. V naught was zero. And so the final speed, say, of this big block, we'll just look at the big block right here, would just be given by this, would have just been gh, or v equals the square root of gh. And then I could have used, say, this equation to get the time. I could have used the other one too, but v equals v naught plus at. We know v naught is zero. We know a is one half g. We know v is the square root of gh. So just throw the two up and throw the g down below. So there is the time it takes. Again, we could have done this with energy and gotten the same answer too. So this is the solution to one of the tests.